Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to the video? This is another paid request, this time for RB. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And RB wanted me to review an episode of Dark Side of the Rain. Now, I've seen a handful of episodes. have not seen nearly all of them, but I've seen a handful. There was one I saw on Owen Hart. I think I saw one on The Plane Ride from Hell. That's a whole other crazy story. This one was on a Chris Benoit, and it's a tough, interesting, well-produced, emotional, but a tough watch. I'll say that. Now, for those who don't know anything about this, Dark Side of the Rain is done by Vice, a channel that I say, well, yeah, I call it a channel that it talks about the dark, sad, tragic tales of the wrestling business. Chris Benoit was a wrestler who would, he, back to the day, wrestling people like Eric. Eddie Guerrero and Chris Jericho at one point came to WCW and then a lot of them went from WCW because they were not being utilized well to WWF. And I thought in its two parts, each one about 40 some minutes long, so the whole total is like an hour and 20 some minutes, give or take. Uh, they got a good chunk of people they could. They got David who is the last son, Chris Benoit's son. I believe is his son from his first marriage. One of the, the few survivors. They got the, the wife that was killed and murdered. Her sister is interviewed. Sandra, the sister of Nancy. And before I do that... People might not even know what tragedy I'm talking about if you're not into wrestling. Chris Benoit, very popular. WrestleMania 20, him and Eddie Guerrero win the big championships. Considered some of the big names of wrestling at the time. And Eddie Guerrero passed away, very sadly. And then... Sometime later, Chris Benoit was found at his home. His wife, Nancy, was dead, strangled. His son, not this David, but there's another son. Um, that kid died, suffocated. And Chris Benoit was found uh, hanging from his equipment. And apparently... He murdered his wife and kid and ended himself. Again, very tragic thing to happen. It goes to the detail of how Chris Benoit got into the business, uh, success he had in WCW, dealing with people like Kevin Sullivan. Who was a wrestler, but he was a booker at the time. And Kevin Sullivan had this woman named Nancy, and her character was woman. I say character as in the she wasn't a wrestler, but she was kind of a hard to even say manager. Kind of how Macho Man Randy Savage had Miss Elizabeth as who Nancy was as woman to Kevin Sullivan, this wrestler. And they did this story where Oh, Chris Benoit took Nancy away from Kevin Sullivan. The thing is, that really did happen. Kind of like in WWF where, oh, Triple H got Vince McMahon's daughter, but then those two actually did fall in love and get married and are still together. Something like that happened here where Nancy ultimately left Kevin Sullivan for Chris Benoit. Now, like I said, they got a lot of people involved with this. They got David, the surviving son, who, of course, was not there on that day of the events happening. Like I said, the Nancy's sister, Sandra. They got Vicky Guerrero 
and who was Eddie Guerrero's wife. They got Chavo Guerrero, who's related to Eddie Guerrero. They got Dean Malenko. They got Chris Jericho, who narrates these Dark Side of the Rings, but he's also interviewed. They got Jim Ross, great famous announcer, who worked behind the scenes at that time. He's interviewed. An author of Ring of Hell. There's a book on the Chris Benoit incident. He's interviewed. Uh, the most interesting interview came from this guy. I want to get his name. Chris Nowinski. Who is a wrestler. But then actually quit. Because he got a couple of concussions. And he wrote a book. On CTE. Concussions. And he's a neuroscientist. I would say his interview was the most interesting of all. Kind of wish he was interviewed a bit more in it. And like I said, before I get even more into... Can't really say spoilers, but... When I say well-produced, I mean the, the editing is on point. At times, they'll have reenactments where... Interviews are talking about something, and it'll cut to... Usually done in slow motion of an event happening. A lot of times the faces are darkened. So our mind can put that person's face into this person's body. Either the part of a wrestling sequence or a, something that happened. It's a way of doing reenactments without fully doing reenactments. It's a, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's a bit hard for me to explain. But uh, I do think that was a... From the first episode was a neat idea to do that. It definitely helps with the proceedings. And I will say, like, I knew bits and pieces, but it was interesting to see the full story. And I know they have done this for comedy now, Dark Side of Comedy, which actually that's another episode RB wants me to review, the Dark Side of Comedy Chris Farley. I will say I think they do much better with wrestling than comedy. But I'll get to that with... I think that'll be uploaded either before or after this one. But if I go through with spoilers... A lot of interesting stuff. Like, of course, Chris Benoit being a fan of the Dynamite Kid. And people blatantly saying how that flying headbutt was detrimental. Like Harley Race did it and he had issues and he told people not to do it. But the Dynamite Kid did it and then even he said, no, don't do it. F fucked up my spine. I'm now, I mean, Dynamite Kid was in a wheelchair for a good chunk of his later life. But, you know, people didn't listen and Chris didn't listen. That's one of the worst moves you could do is the diving headbutt all the way down to the ground. And they go through the background of not his childhood or anything, but just into the wrestling, wrestling in Japan against Eddie Guerrero, wrestling with Chris Jericho. Ben Juan Guerrero became the best of friends in Japan. I did the WCW run, at least a little bit of that. Not too deep, but you know, bits and pieces here. Mainly on the points of meeting Nancy and them getting married. And apparently they strongly hint that Kevin Sullivan abused Nancy. Like, they blatantly talk about how at one point she takes her glasses off and says that Kevin Sullivan gave her a black eye. And then there's text saying, we tried to contact Kevin Sullivan, but he did not want to talk, and he said, those claims are not true. I don't know why you and I want to go on camera and say they're not true, but okay. I don't know. And this kind of becomes sort of a dark side Eddie Guerrero too, because they talk about Eddie Guerrero and he did the, he had a lot of drug problems and he was hiding injuries. They got more of the drug problems than DUIs. Uh, the WrestleMania 20, a uh, great moment of their careers. And then uh, even though Eddie's clean, it's just his heart gave out. Because of the stuff he had done in the past, his heart gave out, and he died. 
and how after that Chris Benoit was absolutely changed. And they mentioned about how he drew away from folks, he didn't talk to people behind the scenes, he wasn't really talking to his wife anymore, how they would go to Vicky Guerrero, and this was... This is some of the more interesting stuff I had never heard before. That they would find Chris Benoit in Eddie Guerrero's bed, holding Eddie's pillow, and being on the side of the bed and crying. Or that he would be in Eddie Guerrero's like weight room and just cry. And of course you don't miss your friend, absolutely. But this is some time after, and he's still in the guy's bed, holding out a pillow and crying as if he lost a husband. It's a very, yes, you don't want to be sad, but when you're more sad than the wife is, and the wife, of course, Vicky was very sad, that leads into something about CT, which I'll get to. Well, I'll just say now. Influence of emotional behavior. And these are like warning signs of what's going on. And about... They go through the whole thing. The He seemed more irritable. He seemed more this and that. He seemed to be... Didn't have these bouts of crying. And you know the day that... The bodies are found, and you know Chavo Guerrero got this weird text. And I will say, when the taunt to the sheriff, and he's mentioning about the time when he found the bodies and the way it was edited, very creepy, very unsettling, very deep pit of your stomach. It was very uncomfortable, as it should. Because it's a terrible event that happened. Very terrible. And they talk about how they found a lot of alcohol. And they found uh, a lot of testosterone in the system. And they talk about how he had inter internet searches about what was the least painful way to end yourself and all this and that. They talk about how they did the, for those who don't know about this, for a day they did a in memory of Benoit because they didn't know what happened. They knew that him and his family died. They didn't know the exact circumstances. And they do show bits of that. I will say that was another interesting thing about this, seeing the old bits of Chris Benoit's matches in Japan or the matches during the, the WWF and WCW day, seeing those bits of those matches, seeing the bits of that in memory show. Of just good luck. I'm sure you'll find it on the internet, of course, but that's something they'll never re release and air on the nerd network because they completely erased Benoit. He's nothing but a distant memory, he's not even a memory anymore in terms of WWE. But it was interesting that in this program they show bits of those people talking about saying the nicest things about Benoit because. Benoit was only nice and a hard worker with them, to them. And uh, they didn't think any different. They, they could never imagine that this guy would do this. And the author of Rena Fell mentions how the wellness program was a joke and it had a lot of loopholes. And like you look at what a lot of people... Which I know Chris Jericho says, no, the wellness program is 100% truthful. Uh, if they, they would pop you if you had aspirin. Listen, Chris Jericho, I would give credit. I may not the big, be the biggest fan of the guy, but the fact that him, he was one of the few people that reached out to the son, David, and the sister-in-law, or the Nancy's sister, Sandra, who's one of the only guys that helped them out. I gotta give credit where credit's due and give respect to the guy for doing that. I do think at times Chris Jericho is a bit too naive on certain things. And if he really thinks that 
WWE is 100% faithful on the wellness pro <laughs> wellness policy. Where you look at people like you hear a lot of stories about Randy Orton in his you know tests or Triple H at the time in his tests and maybe even Dave Batista in his tests. To say is 100% like come on now. And you look at the way some of these guys looked at, even at that time. I mean, to, to say it was 100% faithful well in this program, come on, Chris Jericho. Come on now, man. But like I said, this Chris Nowinski, who was a wrestler and he wrote a book on CTE about concussions and he was a neuroscientist. Like I said, he was the most interesting. He told the story about how months before. Chris Benoit went up to him and asked him, oh, you're writing a book, huh? And, oh, yeah, I've had concussions. I, I forgot. I can't remember how many. Like, I've lost count. And I was going to call him back. This uh, Chris guy did call back Benoit, but then Benoit was arguing and said, I'll call you back, and then never did. And he mentions about how your CTE is pretty much brain rot. And whether it be chair shots, whether it be the diving headbutt, whether it be all combined with how hard you get hit and how many concussions you take. Everybody's minds work differently. I know what people could say, well, what about Mick Foley? What about this and that? I didn't. Everybody's body works differently. Man, not 100% differently if I shoot you in the head. Why should you know? I mean, look at 50 Cent. 50 Cent got shot 18 times and he lived Another person will get a one shot here and die. It's just a matter of timing, luck, bad luck. People's biology are complicated based on what you did two days, three days before, and three years before. I mean, a lot of complications and, and stuff to that. So you look at a guy... And Chris has mentioned about how there was these NFL players at the time. Like one had concussion so bad that he ended himself by drinking antifreeze. There's another guy that led cops on a chase, went to the other side of the road, and went to a crash and burn, fireball and all. And how when you looked at Benoit's brain, he had the mind of an 80-year-old Alzheimer patient. And absolutely, like, brain rot, especially the part that influences emotional behavior, which would explain those crying fits. And then people go, well, it doesn't make sense why he did it. Well, if your brain's not working right, then of course it wouldn't make sense. If your brain was working right, then it wouldn't make sense. Then you would do that stuff either because you're evil or because your brain is fucked up and it's not, it's broken. I guess to put it bluntly, he had a broken brain. And I was stuttering there. Just a broken brain. And before I get further, I know there are people, including friends, who believe Chris Benoit was murdered. Uh, they never go into that. I kind of wish they went into it, whether to disprove or whatever it is, or conspiracy theories. I wish they went into that. I do. Maybe they thought it'd be too... Because there are people who believe that. I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, I have friends who believe Chris Benoit was murdered. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't subscribe to that theory. To his throne. I think he did it. And I think that this is a sad fact of... That's just what happened. This is a guy that... I understand if you're a big family guy, you don't want to believe it. I understand that perfectly. But I looked at it and I go, this is a guy who, with steroids, drugs, irritability, depression of his friend's death, Eddie Guerrero, enough brain rot to do some major brain damage. He, his brain was not on full tilt. 
His brain was not working properly, and that's why he ended up doing this. And, you know, think of anybody who is, quote, crazy. Why do they hear voices? Because they're crazy. If they weren't crazy, then they wouldn't do it. If they're acting rational, then they wouldn't be crazy in the first place. That's the point of crazy. You're not acting rationally. Hence why you're crazy. So yeah, I do believe that he did it. Him being erased, I can understand, but at the same time, you'd have to erase a lot of people in WWE. To Let's be honest, you'd have to, re number one, erase Jimmy Snuka. Because there's all intents and purposes of evidence that he murdered someone as well and covered it up. This, I don't see anything of why there would be a cover-up with this. I, I know I'm going off a tangent, but for people who think this is a conspiracy... I don't believe in a lot of conspiracies. I'm open to like maybe the JFK assassination. Open to that type of conspiracy talk. I like the JFK movie with Oliver Stone. But I don't believe it. I don't. I think there could be conspiracies. But not as much as people think. Because I think people are too stupid to do that. I think we're giving them much smarter. More credit of being smarter than they really are. Again, one of the few I'll think about is the, the JFK. But the other stuff, not really. I'm thinking, okay, so someone murdered and yet they covered it up. What point would there be to cover it up? What point would it be to make it look like Chris Benoit did it? Just people say, oh, Vince McMahon knew about it. Why would Vince McMahon say, you know what? This guy, Benoit, is one of our top stars right now. And you're telling me that you murdered him because of blah, blah, blah. You know what? Uh, you blame it on someone else. Blame it on a serial killer. Blame it on Ted Bundy Jr. I don't care. Because if you say that he did, it's going to ruin my business. It's going to cripple my business. And it's going to shit it down the toilet. Which it did for a while. People like, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't even watch wrestling. Like, it, it did hurt the business for a bit. Because they think of wrestling, it just leaves a bad taste in their mouths. And I, I don't think that was all the case. And Kevin Sullivan did it. I don't think the guy is smart enough to get away with that. He's a guy that Columbo would have gotten out of a confession out of in 10 seconds. So I just, no, I, I believe what happened happened. Sometimes the simplest explanation is the real explanation. Same thing with Bruce Lee. I think Bruce Lee died because he tried to train his body to such perfection, but such perfection comes at a cost, and the most simple thing is what causes downfall. Because most people's bodies can't be that supposedly fit. The something else gonna have to compensate for it and even the smallest thing can give you a allergy, however you want to put it. It's like, no it can't be, it can't be. He's such a fit he's the superstar, he's a superhero. Well, you know, what can I say? Superman has a tiny bit of kryptonite. Make him swallow it. Boom, he's down for a count. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes it's the small things, simplest things that does it. And here, it's not so much small. It's just tra tragic. Like I said, I, I really feel bad for David Benoit, the son. Because he does look a bit like his dad. He really does. He's a fan of wrestling. I'm sure he wants to be in wrestling, but there's no way he's going to do it because they don't. That's going to come up all the time. He's the son of Chris Benoit. Blah 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 blah. He looks like his dad. But I mean, maybe someone got him in independent shows, but bigger than that, no. And I feel bad because he didn't do anything wrong. 
And just just the emotions going through. Same with uh, Sandra. Then the deep credit to Chavo Guerrero and Chris Jericho being the only ones there for this guy, David. Do you have credit to them? Like I said, it's very sad. It's uh, depressing. It's tragic. It's well produced. Two parter. To learn a little bit more about CTE and concussions. I think that's something that gets underplayed at times. And people go, well, what about all these other wrestlers? It just takes one. It's like uh, the opposite of the lottery. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, it's hitting the, the evil lottery. I know this sounds stupid, but I'm just saying, is that one time, one moment combination of stuff that just combust into a set of awful events? You know, why is it that, you know, you'll find a mother on the news, put her kids in the washer and dryer. Or all this other horrible, terrible stuff. I think more of these things happen. It's just the media downplays them because, shh, we don't want, we don't want them to look bad on football and, and because a lot of advertisers, that, that could be a conspiracy I could agree with. That a lot more of this in like football happens. And uh, you know, it's not the only wrestler that's murdered someone, also, and that's why you know the more you learn about wrestling, the more you realize this has been a very depressing, sad business, really. But yeah, I mean, this definitely. Was the emotional roller coaster? I'll, I'll give you that. But like I said, well produced, uh, got a good clutch of people for the interviews. Told a consistent story, was not confusing. The info was going 85 directions. And, uh, yeah, very tragic. And, you know, Chris Benoit was a good wrestler, but he did an awful thing. Mostly because of his mind was gone. His mind was too far gone. And he. Yeah I feel bad for his son David. He's like that wasn't my dad. That was not my dad. So. And I, I believe the kid. I believe the David guy. That it wasn't his dad. It was. Has dad's body, but not his dad's mind. And that's the sad thing about mental health. You know, the, it is a real thing. And if your brain is rotting, it's pretty much what it was at this point. You know, what more can you do? What more can you say? With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later.